Hello everyone, my name is Bernard Bosquines and I'm a first year PhD student in the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid. In the first place, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this space to present this work. The title of this presentation is Recovering VAO in an SKA Intensity Mapping Survey. And it is based on this published work with Santiago Avila and more collaborators. Before starting to discuss it, I will make clear some small concepts that I will use later. In the first place, H1 refers to neutral hydrogen, which will be the observed tracer of the cosmic structure that we will simulate. Also, SKA is the abbreviation for Square Kilometer Array, a radio telescope which is now in construction that will be capable to trace the neutral hydrogen at very, very high redshifts. And finally, the intensity mapping technique will be used in one of the surveys of SKA, and which consists in observing the neutral hydrogen using low angular resolution pixels without detecting individual galaxies, but being able uh, to map an enormous volume of the universe. Now that I have clarified uh, those concepts, I will explain the main idea of this project. We used cosmological simulations in order to simulate an SKA neutral hydrogen intensity mapping observation, in which we have taken into account the effect of the telescope beam, which introduces an angular smoothing in the cosmological signal, and also the foreground removal. And then, using different two point function statistics, we analyzed if the baryonic acoustic oscillation signal can be recovered. In order to develop this work, uh, we have used unit simulations that are for dark matter only simulations. In particular, we worked with a snapshot of dark matter halos at redshift 1.3, in which the halos are assembled uh, from dark matter particles using ROSA. Now, the next step is to extract the neutral hydrogen. At this point, SAGE enters in the game, a semi-analytic model of galaxy evolution that assembles galaxies from halos using its merger history and its mass aggression history. One of the parameters provided by SAGE, among others, is the cold gas. And from the cold gas, we can extract the H1 mass using this equation, in which we assume that the molecular to atomic ratio, R mol, is constant. We have also considered a, a more complicated expression of this parameter in order to analyze better the H1 halo relation. But our clustering analysis, which is the main point of this paper, will remain unchanged using one expression or the other. And now, before continuing to the clustering section, I will explain again some concepts that will be useful from now on. When we talk about correlation functions, the radial scale will be the axis parallel to the line of sight and the angular scale will be perpendicular. And this scheme can make sense taking the plane parallel approximation since the source that we are searching for is far away. Another important parameter that we uh, consider is the mu parameter that is equal to the cosine of theta being theta, the angle between the line of sight and a particular mode. Now uh, we have said that using SAGE, we are able to extract the neutral hydrogen in the simulation. But what we want is to compute the two point correlation function of the neutral hydrogen. Then the next step is to create a grid of neutral hydrogen masses, simulating an intensity map in which it is integrated the 21 centimeter signal. Then, we have divided our simulation in cubic cells of five megaparsecs. And we have summed the H1 masses within a cell, giving one H1 mass per cell. And finally, we convert to our densities. Then, uh, taking into account that the observable for the intensity mapping is the temperature variation, delta T, we introduce the brightness temperature, the proportionality factor between the over densities that we have found and the real observable, the temperature variation. And finally, we compute the two-point correlation function taking pairs. We have computed uh, the isotropic one and also 
the anisotropic one that separates radial scales from angular scales. In fact, uh, the last one will be very useful when we consider the observational effects, which is the next topic of this presentation. The first observational effect is the angular smoothing of the signal that is produced by the telescope beam. In order to simulate it, we change the angular position of the galaxies using a random normal distribution that is centered in the position of each galaxy and with a standard deviation equal to this parameter R beam, which is the only parameter that we, uh, we will consider for this effect. R beam will be larger if we observe farther, and a larger value of this parameter implies a more strong effect. In particular, for redshift 1.3, uh, we have this value of 38 megaparsecs approximately. The second observational effect is the foreground removal. Foregrounds emit signals of the same frequency as neutral hydrogen in our observer frame, and hence can be confused with the cosmological signal. Then we have to remove them. And some techniques use the fact that they emit a spectrum smooth in frequency. The cosmological H1 signal uh, instead has a fluctuating component. Then what we do? is to remove the largest scales with an exponential uh, suppression in Fourier space. The parameter that we have seen here, uh, KFG, decides a bit at which minimum scale we start to cut. Nevertheless, H1 signal also has a component at very large scales that will be removed by this technique. And then we have to analyze if this affects, in particular, the VAO scales. Both observational effects um, will introduce anisotropy in the correlation function. Then, as I have said before, the anisotropic two-point correlation function is a perfect starting point in order to show those effects, those anisotropies. Here, we show nine plots in which we have considered the nine combinations of, uh, what well, nine combinations of both observational effects. At the top left, we have the anisotropic function without considering any effect. We see an isotropic signal, and also we see the VAO clearly. Then going to the right, uh, the telescope beam enters in the game, smoothing the angular scales, but affecting also the radial ones. And going down, uh, we see the effect of foreground removal in the radial scales, that we can see that is more localized. And finally, here, we have in the in the bottom um, the correspondent combinations, and as we can um, as we see uh, in some cases, VAO seems to disappear completely. Our work uh, will focus on recovering precisely this VAO in those cases, using only the information that we see here, and using the knowledge of how the observational effects impact our correlation function. We can start, start, for example, uh, considering uh, the, the multiples, since they can manifest better than isotropies of the signal induced by these observational effects. As we expect in the top left, that is no observational effects, we have no anisotropies. That is, the signal for the quadrupole and the hexadecapole is compatible with zero. And we are left with, with the monopole, that is the red line. In the other cases, the signal propagates to higher multiples. And in several cases, we can see the VAO signal also in the quadruple and in the hexadecal. Now, we introduce several methods in order to isolate the VAO, which is the purpose of this paper. The first one is the mu wedge. If you remember, mu is the cosine of theta, which is the angle between the line of sight and a particular mode. Then the idea is to cut measurements with a value of mu that is heavily affected by either the telescope beam or the foreground's removal. An example, here uh, we are cutting the region of above, above mu equals 0 0.85, and we are keeping with the rest. And with the, the rest of the information, we average pixels that have the same distance to the center, which is done applying this formula below. 
Here we show some results. On the left figure, we focus only on the telescope beam. As you can see on the left, with a mild, mild value of R beam, if the mucot, mucat is more severe, then the BAO is more pronounced. And in the right, uh, considering a strong value of R beam, the shape of the two point correlation function has varied a lot. And we have to go to a minimum value of the mu parameter equal to 0 0.6, 0 0.7 to reach some convergence and also to see the BAO signal and more or less at 100 megaparsec. On the other hand, um, higher cuts are not recommended uh, before we are eliminating a great part of the signal, bring the signal to noise. And the figure in the right uh, is analogous, but now we are only considering the formal removal. The damping that is produced by the exponential suppression flowers the function, but fortunately it not changed greatly the shape of the new wedge correlation function. And finally, uh, we considered a lower plus upper cut in mu when we consider both effects together. We are interested here in the plots on the corner uh, below, especially in which we can see the combined effects. Black lines represent uh, that we have no apply no cut at all. Green lines we have applied a mild cut, and blue lines a strong one. For most of the cases, uh, BAO can be recovered, and with the new cuts uh, of the signal, each sharper. But when we consider a strong value of our beam, it, it becomes more subtle, and this will be one of the main results of, of this paper. And the second method that we have considered in order to recover BAO is a radial one, in which now the main idea is to average the angular coordinates. The resulting correlation function can be seen as a complementary of the projected correlation function WP. Nevertheless, uh, keeping this idea in mind, we have used uh, several estimators. The one-dimensional radial function proposed in the past by B.S. Cusa and Navarro, and a three-dimensional radial function in which we have considered different angular cuts. Here, I show a lot of radial functions in each one of the, the nine combinations. Well, for each subplot, uh, each line represents a different angular cut. For more severe angular cuts, as for example, the, the blue line or, or the violet line, BAO is more pronounced, but we have also a lower signal to noise since we are considering less information. And finally, I would like to conclude with the most important plot that recapitulates what we have seen till now. In this case, uh, we consider specific values of the parameters that corresponds to a realistic SKA observation. We show uh, several radial functions and also several mu wedge functions. To each one, we have subtracted uh, an unwiggle model. We luckily uh, recover BAO for most of the cases, but the main fight here is balancing the sharpness of the BAO peak with the signal to noise ratio. As an example, the radial functions that we have below have a sharper BAO, but the signal to noise also is lower. Uh, but uh, the mu wedge function, that is the function in blue, which is the best one of, we have obtained, has a BAO that is not so sharp, but the signal to noise also is lower. And well, this is all I wanted to say, and I will be happy to, to answer your questions. Thank you for hearing.